Had that mass extinction not have happened, I can guarantee that the types of animals and plants we have on the planet today would be different. But in these same waters, there's another remarkable evolutionary trait emerging. A small pocket of fish, relatives of Astraspus, have developed a unique trait, movable jaws. They are called acanthodians. They swarm anywhere there's a carcass. Their new adaptation allows them to nibble flesh off prey instead of waiting for morsels of food to float by. From their humble beginnings as algae suckers, fish are now moving their way up the food chain. Mass extinction transformed winners into losers, the hunted into hunters, different roles, but the cycle of life and death continues. Life will continue. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the sun, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to kill, and a time to heal. Ecclesiastes, 3rd century BC. It is now 700,000 years after cosmic death rays triggered the first mass extinction. The planet seems to be shaking off the effects of the disaster. The Earth awakens from its cold slumber. But the toll is sobering. Reef systems in the Earth's shallow seas are especially hard hit. Reefs, as a rule, get hit hard during mass extinctions. Reef organisms are always more sensitive to environmental change. They have a restricted ability to live in diverse environments. Over 70% of all species will never be seen again. By analogy, today we can think that scientists have described about a million species, and so 70%, that would be about 700,000 species going extinct over a relatively short period of time. But Earth is remarkably resilient, and life advances once again. In Earth's next chapter, called the Silurian Period, astounding new species repopulate the empty oceans. It is now three million years after the gamma ray burst. Earth returns to a tropical greenhouse climate. Sea levels rebound restoring vast stretches of shallow ocean habitat. Bizarre new animals evolve alongside many familiar creatures from before the extinction. The effects of the Ordovician extinction are kind of interesting. If you look at it in terms of the actual changes in the ecology, it's probably the least effective of the five great extinction events. A lot of animals went extinct, but the diversity the different kinds of organisms that were going to re-evolve re afterwards, pretty much the same. In the open oceans, fish with jaws like the acanthodians swim alongside their more primitive jawless cousins like astraspus. They even begin to invade freshwater lakes and streams on the continents. Once a rare and lowly life form, fish are now taking over our planet. Every fish we know today Catfish, swordfish, minnows, sharks will all be spawned from these ancient ancestors. As the centuries pass, incredible new varieties of these remarkable creatures spread from pole to pole, unaware of what their ancestors suffered or how fragile their world really is. Our planet has endured numerous mass extinctions. No one can predict when the next one will strike, but as sure as the cycles of day to night and season to season, we will be tested again. If a gamma ray burst were to strike Earth in the future, there would be no warning. In fact, death rays could already be on their way.